what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, The Curse of La Llorona. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in Mexico centuries ago. A family composed of two boys and their parents play joyfully in the meadow. The younger son gives the mother a beautiful necklace, and she says that she will treasure it forever. But the idyllic scene is ruined when the younger son realizes that his family has disappeared. He runs out of the meadow and into the woods. He reaches the river and discovers a horrific scene. His mother, still in her white dress but with a veil pulled over her head, is drowning his older brother in the river. She notices the other brother standing there and chases him too. He tries to run away, but the mother quickly grabs him. It is now 1973, and in Los Angeles, a female caseworker, Anna, is struggling to balance her career and her two children that she is raising alone. Her husband was a cop who died in the line of duty. On one particularly busy morning, Anna is running around trying to get her kids ready for school and get to work on time. However, they still miss the school bus, and Anna has to take her kids to school instead. As a result, she is late to work. Later that day, she finds out that her boss has reassigned some of her cases because he's concerned that Anna has too much on her plate. She protests, especially when she sees that the case of the Mexican mother she's close with was reassigned to a younger colleague. Anna's agency was notified that the Mexican mother's two boys have been missing school for several days now. Anna insists that she handle the Mexican mother's case herself. The boss relents and sends Anna to the Mexican mother's apartment with a police officer. They knock on the door, and the Mexican mother pops her head out. She looks deranged, promising them that her boys are fine and safe. But Anna pushes inside alone, leaving the police officer frustrated because he wanted to protect her. She's surprised to see the Mexican mother's apartment because it's covered in lit candles and strange scrawlings. The windows are all boarded up as well. She thinks that the Mexican mother is drinking alcohol again, which was the reason she was assigned to her case four years ago. The Mexican mother suddenly shushes her and leaves the room momentarily. While she's gone, Anna gets curious about what's behind the locked door with a huge drawing of an eye on it. She knocks on the door, fearing the worst. Suddenly, the Mexican mother rushes behind Anna. She is screaming that the door has to be locked and that Anna should stay away. She knocks Anna to the ground, shrieking that she just needs one more night. The police officer storms inside the apartment and drags the Mexican mother away. Anna is left in the room, holding the key she had grabbed from the necklace the Mexican mother was wearing. She unlocks the door and discovers the two boys inside huddled together. They look terrified and starving. They say that they are afraid of a certain she, and Anna assumes that they are talking about the Mexican mother. Anna rushes the two boys to the hospital for immediate medical attention. She assures them that they are safe now. She also notices that they have burn marks around their wrists. The boys explain that she made those marks on their wrists. Again, Anna assumes that they are talking about their Mexican mother. When she gets home, Anna sees her son playing in her husband's office. He's play-acting as a cop because he misses his father. This makes Anna emotional. The Mexican mother's boys spend the night in a shelter. One of them starts sleepwalking, and the other follows him out into the darkened hallway. He points at a woman slowly walking toward them. Anna receives a call in the middle of the night. The boys were found dead in a nearby river. She's shaken by the news and struggles not to cry. She has no choice but to take her own kids with her to the scene of the crime. But she does instruct her son and daughter not to leave the car. Anna talks to the detective handling the case. He explains that the Mexican mother's boys died due to drowning. She can't help but blame herself, and the detective assures her that it was not her fault. Moments later, the Mexican mother arrives at the scene and howls in grief. She screams at Anna and blames her for letting her boys be taken by La Llorona, the weeping woman. Anna is confused, and other policemen take the Mexican mother away in handcuffs, since she's the prime suspect as of now. Meanwhile, the son leaves the car and creeps up to the riverbank. He sees crime scene photographers taking pictures of the two bodies. Behind the son is a woman crying. He's intrigued, and he steps closer to her. The weeping woman is wearing a veil, and when she sees the son, she tries to chase him. The son hurriedly gets back in the car. He frantically locks the doors, but he sees the weeping woman's reflection in the window. She unlocks them, and the son tries to keep the doors from opening. Fortunately, Anna returns, and the weeping woman disappears. Anna attends the boy's funeral a few days later. While in the church, she asks the local priest about the legend of the weeping woman. They sit down, and he tells her the story. It's revealed that the weeping woman was a beautiful girl who lived in Mexico centuries before. She married a wealthy rancher, and they had two children together. But years later, she discovered that the rancher was having an affair with another woman. 
In a fit of rage, she drowned her two children and then killed herself out of guilt. Her spirit is cursed by God to roam the earth, stealing children's souls to replace her two lost boys. Ever since then, the weeping woman became an urban legend used to scare Mexican children into being obedient. When he finishes the story, the priest gives Anna a rosary to strengthen her faith during trying times. Later that day, Anna's daughter is playing by herself in the backyard. She opens an umbrella and sees a reflection of the weeping woman through it. The daughter drops the umbrella, and the wind brings it forward near the pool's edge. She chases the umbrella and picks it up. The weeping woman fully reveals herself and grabs the daughter's hand. The daughter fights back, and the weeping woman disappears. Anna arrives home and finds her daughter sulking in her room. She sees similar burned marks on the daughter's wrist and asks how she got them. The daughter lies, saying that she fell. Later, the detective comes over to their house for dinner. He notices that the kids are sullen. Afterward, he asks Anna to check up on the Mexican mother, because it turns out that she has an alibi for the time of her son's deaths. Anna stays up that night, looking at the case files. She hears creaking noises coming from downstairs, and she goes downstairs to investigate. She sees the study door swinging open and shut. Anna steps inside the room, but it's empty. She hears more creaking noises out in the hall. She finds her son sleepwalking near the front door. Anna tries to wake him up, but someone is trying to open the front door. They retreat back inside the house, and Anna gets trapped inside one of the rooms. She attempts to open the door, but the weeping woman suddenly appears. Anna doesn't quite believe that she is an apparition, so she grabs a baseball bat from the closet and brandishes it as a weapon. She tries to hit the weeping woman, but she disappears again, and Anna's children open the bedroom door. Anna is too shocked to sleep that night. In the morning, she visits the police station where the Mexican mother is being held. She's still very angry with Anna for releasing her children from the locked room she was keeping them in. She argues that she was protecting them from the weeping woman, not hurting them. Anna notices that the Mexican mother has the same burned marks on her arm, but she's still continuing her tirade, saying that when her boys died, she prayed to the weeping woman to bring them back and take Anna's children instead. This is the reason why the weeping woman is now going after Anna's son and daughter. Meanwhile, the son and daughter are once again left alone at the house. The son investigates the noise coming from his sister's bedroom. One of the windows is open, and when he tries to close it, a strong gust of wind blows him back into the room. The curtain flutters and reveals the weeping woman standing by the window. The son runs into the hallway and peeks back into the room. The weeping woman runs out to the hallway and kicks the boy down the stairs. Anna arrives and sees him slumped on the landing. She takes him to the hospital, and the doctor is alarmed by the severe sprain in her son's arm. He thinks that the boy is being abused, so he calls child services for a welfare check on Anna's family. One of Anna's colleagues does the welfare check along with the detective. She sees the sprain and the burn marks, and thinks that Anna is either abusive or negligent. But the children try to explain that their mother is not the one who hurt them. Later that night, the daughter is taking a bath in the tub. She thinks it's her mother who is massaging and rinsing her scalp but it's the weeping woman. The monster forcefully drowns the daughter in the water, making her struggle to breathe. Anna hears her screams and comes running to the bathroom. She rescues her daughter just before she runs out of air. However, the weeping woman appears again and shrieks at Anna. She locks the door to the bathroom and urges her children to run. Once the monster is gone, Anna goes to the priest. He has had experience with the supernatural before, specifically a demon-possessed doll. Anna asks the Catholic Church to intervene and help them. But the priest explains that it would take too long to get the approval needed for an exorcism. Instead, he redirects her to a local shaman, who used to be a priest. Anna goes to the shaman. He warns her that no matter where she goes, the weeping woman will follow, because she's hell-bent on getting the two children's souls. The shaman grabs a few things from his collection of supernatural remedies, and then they head out to Anna's house, so they can finally vanquish the weeping woman. The shaman starts a ritual that is meant to use eggs to detect the presence of evil. He utters a Spanish incantation, and then the eggs placed on the table start vibrating until they explode, and black goo comes out of the shells. After the ritual, they set up more of the shaman's equipment around the house. This includes candles, amulets, and a cross carved from the wood of a fire tree in Mexico. This tree grows near the riverbank where the weeping woman drowned her children, and it's said that it is her weakness. Night falls, and darkness looms closer and closer. The family huddles in the living room, surrounded by many lit candles. The shaman is standing guard over them, with his protective charms. If the flames start to flicker, that means the weeping woman is breaking down their defenses. Sure enough, the weeping woman shrieks loudly, and all the flames go out. Faint whispers are heard from upstairs, and the next thing they know, the weeping woman is hovering above them. 
she ganks Anna and slams her against the wall. The son and daughter hide under the bed, but are quickly found by the weeping woman. She tries to drag them down the hallway, but the shaman steps in and casts her away with one of its herbs. Thanks to that, the weeping woman recoils away and is banished to the outside. The shaman locks the door and explains to the family that as long as the protective circle of the fire tree seeds is unbroken, they are safe. Nevertheless, the weeping woman still tries to get inside the house. She lures the daughter outside using the girl's doll, and the weeping woman drags her to the pool. Anna dives in and desperately searches for her daughter. The daughter is unconscious at the bottom of the pool, and the weeping woman attacks Anna underwater. While all this is going on, the shaman sprinkles fire tree seeds on the water and prays in Spanish. The weeping woman weakens again, and she disappears. Anna and her daughter surface out of the water. In her hand is the weeping woman's necklace she grabbed when they were scuffling. But the nightmare is far from over. The daughter is in a trance because she is now controlled by the weeping woman, and she's trying to go to the monster. The shaman suggests that they lock the son and daughter inside the closet, similar to what the Mexican mother tried to do when she locked her boys in the room to protect them from the weeping woman. Anna and the shaman keep watch for the rest of the night. Sometime later, the Mexican mother steps inside the front door, holding the gun. She attempts to kidnap Anna's son and daughter, so she can personally give them to the weeping woman in exchange for her own sons. Anna reasons with her, and the Mexican mother shoots the shaman. She then calls to the weeping woman and breaks the protective circle around the house, so the monster can come in. A huge gust of wind blows the Mexican mother to the floor as the weeping woman enters. She grabs Anna again and locks her in a separate room. The son and daughter scurry away into the attic to hide. They run behind the storage boxes inside, but the weeping woman still finds them. As she stalks toward them, the son reveals the necklace. The weeping woman's monstrous face fades away, and for a moment, she looks human again. She remembers the love her son's head for her, and she cries. But as the daughter inches backward, she accidentally takes down a cloth covering a mirror. The weeping woman sees her demonic face reflected in it, and she is a heartless monster once again. The Mexican mother gets a change of heart, and she realizes that it's cruel to put another mother through the pain she experienced, so she frees Anna from the locked room. Anna hurries to the attic and hugs her children in a desperate effort to shield them from the weeping woman. The shaman appears and throws the fire tree cross to Anna, who then uses it to stab the malevolent entity in the chest. The weeping woman disappears for good. In the bright light of the morning, all is well again. The family says goodbye to the shaman, and they thank him for saving them. The movie ends with the kids being carefree and running to the house to play. However, Anna gets an eerie feeling. She stares at the puddle of rainwater in front of her house, sensing that maybe the weeping woman will be back. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.